hanging over me You've been so, so good to me Before I took a breath You breathed your life in me You've been so, so kind
Good morning, you guys. Welcome to Journey Church Online. We are so thankful that you clicked to join us this morning, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, however you're tuning in. Thank you so much for joining us. We are excited to worship with you today. Hey, before it goes any farther, though, let's see if anybody else wants to join in. So right now, before we get rocking and rolling, this link right here that says share or start a watch party, go ahead and click that so that as your friends are scrolling through social media, they'll see what you're doing. They might even want to join in and have just a great time worshiping with you as well. If you are already tuned in, you can go ahead and scroll through the comments. You'll see that there's a connection card. When we see each other on Sunday mornings, we kind of know what's going on with each other, what's happening in our lives, how we can pray for, how we can support each other. And right now that's just a lot harder to do. So this connection card is just an easy way for Journey to know how we can pray for you, how we can support you, how we can help get you connected. So we'd love if everybody would take a second and fill that out. If you wanna support the ministry that's happening here at Journey Church, there's a couple ways you can do that. In the YouVersion app, which is that Bible app, if you scroll down to the bottom, there's a link that you could click. You also could go to our website, welcometojourney.com. There's an easy link to follow there. It'll also help you make a donation. Or you could mail a check to 1000 Royal Park Drive, Monroe, Georgia, 30656. We are so, so thankful, again, that you tuned in with us. We are excited to get back to some worship with Zach and another amazing message from Pastor Ken. You guys, they just do fantastic work week after week. And I know that you're going to be amazed and blessed because God is awesome and our pastors rock. All right. Thanks for joining us at Journey Church Online. We'll see you guys soon.
back, everyone. I'm glad you're with us today as we study a little more of God's Word. We're starting a new series today called The Table. And obviously, uh, everyone has a table in their home. Some of us have multiple tables. Uh, we have the dining room table where we hardly ever eat, and then the kitchen table. And for most of us, that's where we eat most of the time. Unless you have uh, a bar or a counter or an island and everybody just pulls up there, and, and that's where your family eats, which is great. Or maybe now that the weather is nice, uh, you're eating on the back deck or on the patio. You have a patio table where you like to eat. Uh, or for some of us, maybe you, you eat in front of the TV. You remember back in the 70s and 80s when the TV stand came out? You, you, you fold, unfolded it and you sat it in front of the TV. You could do your two favorite things. You could eat while watching television and uh, I don't know maybe it's still popular maybe some of you still do that I, I, I have found that moms were never uh, a, a real fan of the TV stand for multiple reasons uh, one of which is because you usually spilled something uh, moms are not big fans of spilling food around the house or or leaving uh, cups half full of water or soda or tea or milk spread out all over the house. Moms are not big fans of that. Moms in general, I don't want to mischaracterize you, mom, but moms in general are big fans of the table. Hey, we all come together. We all eat together. We don't eat in our individual rooms. We don't eat in the living room. We all eat around the table. Moms really like the table. Uh, th now, there's some challenges with the table. W one ongoing challenge, at least at our house, is the table is a perfect place to collect things. Uh, I think it's because of the surface area. If you have a big project that you're working on, it's really easy to use the table to spread out all your paperwork and uh, your laptop and all of the resources that you're going to need and just kind of plop down at the table because there's so much room at the table that you can get spread out. Those sort of challenges um, sometimes make the table difficult. Well, they're challenges to us coming around the table, sometimes because there's stuff all over the table. We've had some challenges related to the table the last few months. The, the last couple of months have impacted the table. And some of it's been negative. Uh, perhaps you live alone or perhaps you have adult children. And as the implications of the coronavirus begin to take place in our society, that limited the number of people who were around your table. Um, you couldn't go visit older parents. Uh, you Older parents couldn't have grandparents around the table. That's been a real challenge to the table. So for a lot of us, there's been less table time, at least extended table time with extended family. Uh, for all of us, our restaurant table time has been cut down. We, we haven't been able to, to go visit with friends, to call somebody up and say, hey, meet me at this restaurant. I, let's have lunch together. Uh, if you wanted to eat out, you had to go pick it up and, and bring it back. But we were limited in getting together with our friends, especially, and sitting around the table. We were limited in having friends over to the house. You couldn't do that the past couple of months. You, you couldn't just call up a, a bunch of friends and say, hey, we're grilling out. Y'all come over. We want you to eat with us. There have been challenges that have impacted our table time. Easter's a good example. Uh, it was disappointing that we couldn't all get together and worship together uh, at Easter. It was shocking. We've never had an Easter like that in our lifetime. But also, we weren't able to have Easter lunch together. My extended family often comes into the area, and we have a big lunch after Easter Sunday services. None of that happened. So for a lot of us, and, and all of us really in some way, our table time has been very restricted over the last couple of months. But for others of us, there's been a positive side of being stuck at home. And that is, we've had to eat dinner together almost every night. We've come to the table 
almost every night. That's been a positive thing. Our, our family, my, my family, we've sat down together more than we have in a long time. Almost every night was dinner around the table, conversations around the table. Seeing each other, spending time with each other, conversations that we could have with one another. Our family, immediate family table time has gone way up because people have been home. You couldn't leave the house. Uh, there was no little league. There was no sports going on. There, were just, there was no school. Kids were doing school online. They were home. Some of us were working more from home. Some of us were working all the time from home. Everybody was home, and that meant for a lot of us, we spent a lot more time as a family around the table. So many positive things. Maybe some things that we'll want to continue after this season is over. Maybe we've realized time around the table is great. Now back to mom, that, that created some challenges for mom and maybe for dad because mom, you only thought the question, what's for dinner, was a painful question before coronavirus. But when, when we were having to ask that question every single night because we couldn't go anywhere, we had to eat at the table, it became that much more of a problem. And as I posted recently, Whoever said that eating out less would cause us to lose weight was a liar. Right? Apparently, eating out is not what causes us to gain weight. Being stuck at home with snacks is what causes us to gain weight. Right? We're, we're learning all of this new information because we've had more table time. We've, we've had more dinner time. And of course, whatever money we were saving by not eating out, we were spending much more money on groceries because we were at the table every single night. I, I have girls in my house. I have no idea how those of you with boys have afforded groceries through the coronavirus. But again, the upside, the upside has been we've been able to come together around the table consistently. Sharing meals together, being around the table, it was part of the DNA of the early church. Uh, often in the Bible, it, it uses the phrase in English, they broke bread together. And, and whether you're religious or not, whether you go to church a lot or not, you probably know that phrase. Maybe you've even used that phrase. Sometimes we use it when, when we say, hey, we need to get together. We need to hang out. We, we need to have lunch together. We need to break bread together together. And, and the New Testament especially tells us this is what the early Christians would do. They would break bread together. And it took, it took a lot of different forms. Uh, the Lord's Supper is sometimes described in that way. Communion, the Eucharist, it's described as breaking bread together because the body of Jesus was broken. So the church gathered together to break bread in that way. Uh, the church celebrated Passover or Seder meal. They would get together and, and have a, a feast, a, a meal together. Uh, we find out in the New Testament that early Christians would have what they called a love fe a feast or an agape feast. Uh, it was sort of, sort of like our potluck, right? dinner on the grounds. The church would get together. They would share a whole meal together. They would just hang out. They would just be together. This idea of breaking bread, of being around the table, it's, it's in the DNA of Christianity from the very, very beginning. I want to take us to... Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost has happened and, and the church is being formed and there's a familiar description of the early church found all throughout Acts chapter 2. Here's part of that description. They, meaning the early church, the early Christians, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer, Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. What a beautiful description. They, they hung out. 
They ate together with glad and sincere hearts. That, that's a group that you would want to come around the table with. You would want to hang out with. If they're getting together filled with joy and, and filled with sincerity, that'd be a great group to, to break bread with, right? to, to have a meal with. That, that phrase, sincere hearts, glad and sincere hearts, the King James translates it, singleness of heart. That word translated singleness or, or sincere, uh, it, it's only used at this point in the New Testament. We don't find this word anywhere else in the New Testament. It's the Greek word, aphelotes. And aphelotes literally means not to stumble or stub your foot on a stone. Not to get tripped up. Not, not to get pulled away from the important things by small things. They had sincere hearts. They loved Jesus so much and they loved the community of believers so much. They loved gathering together so much. Their hearts were so committed to the cause of Jesus. They didn't get sidetracked on other little stones, other little issues. They, they didn't get sucked into to the world, to, to the, the little trappings of the world that we live in, they came and they ate together with singleness of heart, with sincerity of heart, being solely committed to Jesus and through Jesus being committed to one another. One of the ways that they maintained this sincerity, this singleness of heart. One of the ways they kept from getting tripped up by little issues and little stones and little, little uh, uh, sidetracks was to come around the table regularly. I, I, I think we would all agree that the dynamics around the table are just different from other places. Right? It's different from working in a cubicle next to someone. It's just a different dynamic when you sit down to eat with someone. It, it's different even from just being a neighbor to someone. Sitting at the same table, knee to knee, eye to eye, having conversation, the dynamic seems to shift in that moment. Most of us have had the experience of being at work and working on a project with a group of people and, and we were knee deep into the project and somebody says, you know what, let's take a break. Let's all go get lunch. And when you get around the table, the whole discussion changes. The temperature changes. The dynamics change. You, you, you start asking more personal questions. Hey, tell me about your family. Uh, what did you do before you came to this company? Where are you from? Where did you go to school? The table shifts the dynamics in the conversation, right? The table changes the, the dynamics, more so than just being at work with somebody, more so than just living next to somebody, sitting down changes the dynamics, or, or even just going to church with somebody, which is important, and, and, and which we should do. We should gather online and in person. We should gather as the church, but even when we're physically present at the church, we're in the service, and we say hi in the hallway, we have a few minutes of conversation, and then we're back in our cars. Sitting down at the table with one another is even a different dynamic than attending a worship service together. You just ask different questions. You, you, you get to know each other in a different way. Sometimes people will invite me to lunch or I'll go to lunch with somebody and, and we've never seen each other outside of church. We've never had lunch together and occasionally I sense just a, a little bit of anxiousness on that person. They're not really sure uh, what to expect when they go to lunch. So if that's you, if you're that, but if we've never been to lunch together, uh, le let me uh, assure you that if we sit down for chicken fingers, I, I don't bring a message with me. I, I, I don't bring four or five points. Uh, I, I don't pull out the U version app and say, well, you may want to follow along with our discussion using the U version app today as we eat our chicken wings. No, we just sit down and talk. Right? And it's the same me. It's the same me that you meet on Sunday morning. You're the same you. It's just that the table shifts the dynamics a little bit, right? It, it relaxes us. We, 
We go places that we don't get to go on a Sunday morning. You go places with people you work with that you don't get to go when you're working next to them. The table has this wonderful way of shifting the dynamics. That's one of the reasons this is so important is that we begin to talk, we begin to share our life on a different level. One of the reasons the, the dynamic is different around the table is because proximity makes a difference around the table, right? Being that close, knee to knee, eye to eye, proximity, us just being closer than we are normally makes a huge difference. Different. It's different than the office. It's different even than, than at church. It's different than our neighbor who lives next door that we pass occasionally. And, and, and it's not that proximity by itself can create relationship, but being that close, intentionally saying, I want to spend time with you around the table. Let's go to lunch. That proximity gives relationship a chance. It gives friendship a a chance, a totally different proximity than the office or any other type of relationship when we sit down to have lunch. We're gonna share the same salt and pepper shaker. I'm gonna ask you to pass the barbecue sauce. Hey, can you hand me a few napkins? We're gonna have that awkward moment where somebody accidentally steps on the other person's toe or kicks the other person in the shin. We're, we're, we're gonna have that awkward moment because we're close physically we're close to one another but it's around the table it's it, it's a beautiful awkward right? it's a beautiful awkward when when you decide I'm going to sit down with somebody and we're just going to talk and there's not an agenda and there's not points we've been separated a lot lately we haven't been able to get around the table very much with friends other than our family Lately, we've had Zoom meetings and FaceTime and Google Hangouts, but you can't really have a meal on Zoom. We tried it a little bit with our young couples. We told them in our first couple of meetings, everybody has to bring their own snacks because we're used to having snacks when our young couples group gets together. We said, look, just everybody bring snacks and somebody was eating pizza rolls and somebody was eating chips and dip, but it wasn't the same as when we're in the same room, around the same table, dipping out of the same salsa, unless you double dip and then we don't dip out of the same salsa, right? But all of those interactions, that, that proximity, that being close, even that awkwardness of what do we say next and I'm sorry, I didn't mean to kick you, all of that is a part of drawing us closer to one another. Now, another reason the table shifts the dynamics is the fact that you have to stay until the end of the meal, right? That makes a difference around the table. The fact that you have to stay, you can't pop in and pop out. You have to stay all the way to the end. As a matter of fact, that's why some of you don't do lunches very much. Just be honest. You know who you are. You don't agree to lunch or dinner very often because in the back of your mind, you're thinking, well, what if, we, what if we run out of things to say before the food even gets there? And then we just have to sit in this awkward silence. What if I'm ready to go after the appetizer? You can't go, right? You, you, can't, you can't bolt after the salad. You're making a commitment. When you decide to have lunch with somebody, when you, you decide to break bread together, you're making a commitment to stay. Like, I'm, I'm gonna stay all the way to the end. I'm gonna be here. We're gonna figure out what to talk about. I'm gonna get to know you better. You're gonna get to know me better. We may find some things we agree on. We may run into some things we disagree on, but we're staying at the table. We're gonna keep talking to one another. We're, we're gonna talk through those conversations. Now, you don't have to stay for dessert, right? Some of you have pulled that before, right? The waitress shows up at the end of the meal and says, would you like dessert? And you are quick to say, no, we are good. I'm so full. We, could, we don't need any dessert. Just a check, please, right? You can get out of dessert, but when you decide to go to the table, you are agreeing to stay. So much of the world we live in, you don't have to stay. You, you don't have to continue the conversation. For example, you don't have to stay on social media. Have you noticed that? You don't have to stay at the table in social media. You can throw a comment out and walk away. And you, you can throw an opinion out and, and walk away. 
You can unfollow. You can unfriend. You don't have to stay on social media. You're not making a commitment on social media. You're not continuing a conversation. You can drop out whenever you want. Listen, that's why the table's so important. The table is important because we have to come and stay. And we have to look each other eye to eye. And if we disagree about something, somebody's got to ask, tell me why you feel that way. Tell me why you think that. Here's kind of what I was thinking. And have you, have you ever noticed we say things differently eye to eye than we do online? And it's almost like we're different people online than we are at the table. This is the benefit of the table, especially right now. This is the benefit of having that awkward proximity where I'm gonna sit with you and I'm gonna stay with you and we're going to keep talking. I'm not gonna unfollow you after the salad. I'm not gonna unfriend you after the appetizer. I'm here to get to know you. See, the table... The table helps prevent us from tripping over little stones that we trip over in other communication, that we trip over in social media. Like we trip over a lot of little issues in social media, not at the table. When I'm sitting down with you, when I'm committed to being with you, to staying in it with you, I don't trip over those little issues. I, I, I see the big picture better when you and I are eye to eye and knee to knee and sitting around the table. I think these are some of the reasons Jesus so often taught around the table. I, I think these are some of the reasons. Jesus wanted to be close to people, right? He, he, he wanted to accidentally kick somebody's shin under the table. He, he, he wanted to look into their eye when he asked a question. He wanted to see their emotion when they made a comment or they responded and he wanted them to have to stay. He wanted them to feel the pressure of just getting up and leaving and how that would look. He wanted extended time with somebody, the kind of time that you get when you're around the table. So I'm inviting you in this series. I'm calling you to the table. We've been apart long enough. We've been separated long enough. Listen, there've been a lot of little stones there have been a lot of little issues. We've had opinions. We've, we've sometimes chosen sides. There's been a lot of little stones that have pulled us away from each other, pulled us away from the table, pulled us away from the central issue of learning to live and love like Jesus. When I was a kid, maybe some of you moms still do it. When I was a kid, my mom would yell in the backyard, wash up, it's time for dinner. Come inside, it's time for dinner. And there was a signal, there was a call to the table. That's what I'm doing this morning. That's all, that's all I want to do this morning. We're going to study some specific times Jesus got around the table over the next five or so weeks. This morning, I just want to call us back to the table because we've been so far apart for these last few months. There have been so many little stones. I'm just calling us. Can we come back to the table? Look, there's still a lot of unanswered questions with everything that's happening. There's, there's not a lot of clarity on some issues. We may never get clarity, but can we be reminded of what's most important? Living and loving like Jesus, walking with Jesus, loving our neighbor as ourself. You're like me. You spent the better part of, of a week between the hours of 7 and 10 p.m. keeping an eye on the television. You, you were wanting to know what was happening in our backyard, whether it was here locally or especially what was happening in Atlanta. Night after night, we, we were watching. I, I'm not against protests or rallies. And as a matter of fact, I've attended several uh, during, this, d during everything that's been going on. I I'm going to attend another one on Friday. You're welcome to go with me. If you want more information, you can email me. I I I there is a place for letting our voice be heard. There is a place for awareness. But here's what I want to say through this series. Where the power and effectiveness of protest ends 
is where the power and effectiveness of the table begins. Where the power and the effectiveness of protest ends, that's where the power and effectiveness of the table begins. We should raise our voices at times. We should, we should let our opinions be known at times. But there's an end to how effective just saying my opinion is. And where that ends, sitting eye to eye and knee to knee, kicking each other in the shin, reaching for the barbecue sauce at the same time. That power begins where protests end. And we've protested in a lot of ways. There have been literal protests over the last couple of weeks as as serious matters of, of racial justice are being raised again, thankfully. We need to keep raising those issues. But we've protested other things as well on social media, right? We've given opinions. We've, we've shouted. We've name-called. We've categorized. We've run to our corners and joined our sides. But at some point, it's just not effective anymore. But, but where the effectiveness of that runs out is where the effectiveness of sitting face to face begins. We begin to build and maybe repair and rebuild relationships, reminding ourselves what's a little stone and what's really the main issue. I want to leave you with just a couple of questions as we close today. First question. Who do you need to be close to? We're going to come back to this question again and again in the series. Jesus sat with some very interesting people. It was very interesting to see who he invited to the table. I'm going to press that question on you for about five or six weeks. Who needs to be at the table where you are? Who do you need to sit down with? Second question. Who do you need to stay in it with. I don't think that's grammatically correct, but I'm going to say it anyway. Who do you need to stay in it with? Who do you need to stay with all the way to the end of the meal? And maybe you backed out recently. Maybe you ran away recently. Maybe you threw a comment out and then you backed off. There's some people, there's some people that you need to be connected with and you can't run away from. Who are those people? Who do you need just to stay in it and keep working through hard conversations, life enriching, relationship deepening conversation? Who are those people that you just need to stay in it with all the way to dessert? One more question. How will you, me, how how will we keep the little stones from, from tripping us up? How can we renew our commitment to not allow little opinions and little ideas and little issues to keep us from the most important thing, learning to live and love like Jesus. You see, that's what the early church did. They didn't get sidetracked. They had sincere hearts. They had singleness of heart. They came around the table to remind themselves of what was important, most important, and what wasn't most important. I want us to be like them. I hope you do too. Let's come to the table. God, thank you. Thank you for your goodness, your love. Thank you that Jesus modeled a life at the table. He didn't model a life of just throwing things out there. He met people around the meal. He stayed with people. He looked people in the eye. He embraced the sometimes awkward moments of eating together. We need that. We need to be people committed to the table. In some ways, it's it's easier to protest. In some ways, it's easier to have a slogan or a hashtag or a t-shirt. And there may be nothing wrong with any of that. There's place for that. Sometimes it's easier to throw our opinion out. God, the effectiveness of that ends at some point. And usually where it ends is we're just mad at everybody. And everybody's mad at us. 
That's where the power of the table steps in to draw us back together, to remind us what's most important, to remind us why we started this relationship in the first place, why we need this relationship in the first place. Bring us to the table, God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you for worshiping again with us. I hope that you will be back next Sunday. Uh, If you desire to worship with us in person, we have started in-person services, but we need you to register for those. Uh, You can find a link on our website or in the comments of the uh, live stream. Also, Vacation Bible School begins tomorrow. We've shifted to an online version, but Miss Jennifer and all of her volunteers have done an incredible job of getting a week of Bible study and crafts and games ready for your kids. I hope they're going to be a part. If you don't have kids in Vacation Bible School, be sure to be praying that God would use our online VBS to teach kids about God and to draw them into a relationship with Jesus. If you haven't had an opportunity to give yet, then we invite you to do that, either through the YouVersion app or through our website, welcometojourney.com. You can always mail your gifts to our church as well if you prefer to do that. I hope you have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday.